even if you're on an inspection or on an interview regarding bed bugs, inspections are always preferred. For one reason, you can see what you're investigating as far as in the mattresses. You want to make sure that it's not an imposter. A lot of times people are getting bit by other insects and it's misdiagnosed over the phone because you're not there to physically inspect. Don't assume that the bites are bed bugs. Bites can be hard to identify even for doctors. You have to rule out mosquitoes, fleas, mites, biting gnats, and you need to do that by conducting a visual inspection of the property. That's really hard to do over the phone. That's why a lot of bed bug jobs are undersold or misdiagnosed. It's best to collect and identify bed bugs to confirm bites. Look for the bites themselves. Look at their blood stains, especially along the seams of the mattresses. Further look for dark spots or insect waste, little brown or black specks. Bed bugs might crawl into hiding places or furniture and walls. You have to investigate it. But what you don't want to do is diagnose a bed bug problem when they're dealing actually with fleas. A lot of times fleas will be introduced with, without pets. They'll be introduced by raccoons living in the attic or, or a skunk or a fox living underneath the front stoop that the homeowners may not even know about it. And they can cause the same reaction and oftentimes it, if you're treating for bed bugs it's not going to do anything for fleas of this nature. So. Uh, you're going to ruin the credibility of the company and you're not going to solve the problem. Also, there's a situation that we run into a lot. It's called delusionary parasitosis. You can abbreviate it as DP. It's a mental disorder in which individuals have a persistent belief that they are being infested or living with bugs or pathogens and parasites. And to them, it's real. They'll even scratch themselves and it can be confused with bites, but they've actually committed the uh, damage to themselves by scratching and having this fear of bugs or pathogens or such crawling over them. So, knowing that they're cryptic and they can be just about anywhere, where do you really start? Where do you look? Especially on an inspection and the people are complaining that they're uh, either in the early stages of a bed bug infestation or they're getting totally devastated by the bites. During the early stages of an infestation, bed bugs tend to be located very close to the host, around the beds, around the furniture. As populations increase and the age of the infestation grows, the likelihood of finding bed bugs in unpredictable areas away from the host sites increases. Some key bed bug hotspots include, which we should be obvious, mattresses, box springs, bed bug, I mean bed frames, headboards, unupholstered furniture, desk chairs, carpet edges under and behind baseboards, and behind wall hangings such as pictures and actually inside the picture frames. But sometimes I've found them in other places that are a little unusual. And if you forget one, you're going to be in trouble because you're not going to solve the infestation. As I said, picture frames. We found them in stuffed animals. That's difficult. Kids' backpacks, light fixtures, lampshades, even toilet paper rolls, and inside clocks on microwaves and stoves. They'll get up inside the glass and hide in there. Any place you can imagine, bed bugs will find a place to hide and to be able to harvest their blood meal. So you've got to really be a a uh, good inspector to solve bed bug problems, especially if it's infested. The $64 million question is, since they do partake of a blood meal and they share basically blood as they're moving from host to host, do they transmit disease? Bed bugs are more of a nuisance than a health hazard. That's debatable as far as the health hazard. However, in recent study, researchers reviewed 53, 53 recent studies on bed bugs and their health and medical effects. The results, the results showed, although bed bugs have been blamed to spread up to 40 different human diseases, there is little evidence to suggest they are carriers of human disease. However, that the realm of public health far exceeds if they spread disease or not. And we shouldn't be getting people to treat bed bug jobs out of fear of transmission of diseases. What we should do is recognize the true impact it has on the entire family. It's a social impact, it's a mental impact, it's a stigma associated with bed bugs that goes back for centuries. And actually, if you think about it, if your children are being uh, basically eaten <laughs> on a nightly basis and they're complaining, they're itching, and people associate bed bugs with uh, filth and, and dirt, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not associated with it at all. It's just that infestations can occur in the cleanest of homes, depending upon how the infestation started, either through travel or what. But it's a, it's a huge mental impact. 
that uh, can't be measured on families that have bed bugs. Plus, bed bugs are so difficult to get rid of that people ex expectations think, oh, I got a treatment that's going to go away, but that is not the case. Bed bug jobs are chronic. They can go on for treatment after treatment after treatment and still not solve the problem because the source of the infestation, the husband, the wife could be traveling, moving bed bugs back in and out on a, on a basis. Or they could be child bringing them home from college or school. So until you find the source of the infestation, uh, it's going to be very difficult to solve, not to mention that they're hard to treat anyway. Now, if you're living in a multi-living unit like uh, condos or apartments or townhouses, you can compound that tenfold because the infestation could be coming from the unit next door. Sometimes it takes doctors to diagnose the dermatology, dermatology of this insect, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that you're being eaten alive. The key is figure out if in fact it is bed bugs and then start to form a plan and fix it. A lot of legal problems have occurred because of inability for companies to solve bed bug problems and that's because they gave false expectation. You should never tell anyone on a bed bug job, we're going to take care of this, we're going to get rid of it. What you're going to attempt to do is to treat it and control it. Bed bugs are so difficult to get rid of, the expectations on curing this problem are paramount to legal action if you mislead the consumer. Tell them, this is, other than a sickness to your family, this is the worst thing you're going to get in the house, and the process to cure it is going to be long and difficult. Consumer confidence. We all know about reviews. If you tell someone that you're the end all and you can get rid of bed bugs and you go in with just to sell the job, and you don't, then you're going to be eating up not with bed bugs but with reviews, and that's going to be a little more difficult to overcome because consumer confidence lasts forever. One bad review can damage everything you've done. 